Hi, I'm George. Let's take a look at the color panel here inside of Photoshop Creative Suite. This is version 2022. And you see it over here on the right hand side. It's a little tab right there that says color. There it is. Now, by default, it shows you this basic layout here. This is the Hue Cube. And it's the same look that you'll see over here if you click on the color panel, left hand side there, the color picker. You get the exact same view here. Notice it's also set at the same color as well. So it's basically the same thing. Okay, I'll cancel that out. And the way this works is you have your hue here on the right-hand side. Simply choose a hue. That's your basic color. And then in here, you can choose the brightness, top to bottom, and the saturation, left to right. So full saturation, full brightness is upper right-hand corner. And then black, bottom left-hand corner, and white, upper left-hand corner. And as you move around, you can see where you're selecting this. It's going to change the view here inside of that color box right here. This is the foreground color. If you want to change the background color, just click on that. And then choose a different color for your background. There we go. And if you see this little warning icon here, that means that this color is not going to produce well inside of CMYK printing. If you're worried about RGB for screen use, you can ignore that doesn't make any difference for RGB. But if you're printing, just click on that. It's then going to reset this to find the closest value it can to that. Notice that some colors like your bright purples, your bright yellows, your bright greens don't do very well for CMYK. Now you can sometimes fudge it up a little bit and try to get a little bit closer to what you want. I'm just trying to go just a little higher here. That's a little bit better than it was. So a bit closer, but not much. So there you go. That's how the basic U-Cube works. Now there are different options over here for choosing color, and you'll find those over here right there, a little icon. Click on that, and you have these options here. Brightness cube, color wheel, gray scale slider, RGB, hue saturation, brightness sliders, CMYK lab, and web color sliders. Look at the brightness cube. This is the same basic cube layout, except that the brightness now is on the right-hand side. And then you have hue across the top and saturation top to bottom. So it's just changing the basic coloration and looking at it in a little different manner. Then you have our color wheel right here. And this is really interesting. The color wheel has the hue around the outside and then the brightness saturation in the center here. So if I just take this and pull that around, notice how the central triangle changes colors. I pull the outside ring and I can then change the saturation in here. There you go. And brightness up and down. So it allows you to have those very easy to use controls. Now, notice over here that we have two sliders here, saturation and brightness. You can work with the sliders as well if you want to, just control just the brightness like that, or just control the saturation. Now notice that bright green does not work again well right here for CMYK. You can come in, maybe fudge things up a little bit in here, kind of play back and forth just a touch, and you can possibly find something which is a bit better, a bit closer, but it does take a little bit of tweaking to get a good CMYK especially on your real bright colors like your bright green, your bright magenta, and your bright yellow. You also, if you want to, you can come in here and type in a number. Say I wanted to have this at exactly 60% brightness. You can do that right there. Now, one thing about these colors in here, even though we see three sliders, this is not RGB. That's different. This is hue, saturation, brightness. Your RGB value is what's on the outside here and right across the top. The saturation and brightness is just varying that one specific color. Okay, let's go back here and take a look at our next one, gray sliders. You get your same basic color cube in here, but the slider up here handles your grayscale. And then here's your RGB. So if you need to work with the RGB colors, that's that choice. And you can then type in your specific RGB values right in here. Or just use the slider controls on that. Notice again, if I go too far, I get that same warning for CMYK colors. Below that, we have the hue, saturation, brightness sliders. There we go. And again, you can type in numbers if you want to, if you have that information. And here's our CMYK sliders. So you want to use sliders. And if you're working for a print output, you want to be using the CMYK. If you're working for a screen output, you know, computer screen, tablet, smartphone, things like that, then you want to use the RGB sliders if you're using sliders. Then we have our lab sliders. Now this is a luminance channel. You can see there are illumination right here and then A and B channels. And then finally, web color sliders. Now these really aren't that important any longer. It used to be that computer screens could only show 256 colors or a mix of those things. And because of that, there were certain colors that would be the same that would match on a Macintosh and on a PC. So it would look the same on your computer screen. And that's where the web safe colors come from. Now monitors can show millions of colors and the computer screens match anyway. So this really is no longer necessary. And then Hue Cube, of course, is back to your original setup. Now you can use whichever one you want to use for different uses or even at different times. You can change around in the same project. It doesn't matter. Just choose the one that you want to work with. I then keep the color wheel up here on my color tab. And then if I want to have the Hue Cube, I'll go over here and just click on the color picker 
left hand side here and there is the hue cube i'll kind of work that way on these two tools and there are a few more options over here again click on that little icon and we have down here you can copy your color as html or as a hex code color if you need to use that in coding and then down below we have some more options down here now these go back and use some of these options up here but change the spectrum or the major color area let's take a look at the rgb spectrum there you go here's our red blue and green spectrum and we're looking at the hue saturation and brightness the hsb up here but we have the rgb spectrum right down there same thing here for the cmyk spectrum there we go we're still looking at our hue saturation brightness slider controls we now have the spectrum here set up for cmyk and then we have a grayscale ramp there it is and also a ramp showing your current colors right now i have that blue and the green up there which we picked earlier we now have this ramp this gradient in here working from those two colors gives you a great deal of flexibility to get exactly the right color you want based upon your current foreground and background colors you can also make the ramp web safe and again really not necessary any longer and you can close the panel here or close the whole tab group if you like this video hit that like button click on share click on subscribe and check out my channel for a bunch more photoshop videos and i'll see you next time